All right, so I'm here with Miss Hine. That's how I know her. She was my theater teacher at Clay High School. Um, and you've been doing the 31 Day Makeup Challenge, so what's that about? Sure, so um, the 31 Day Makeup Challenge is actually sponsored by, it's called VAMP, it's actually called VAMP. It's the Vocational Academy for Makeup and Prosthetics, and it's based out of somewhere in Florida, I believe. Um, I've never attended, but they released toward the end of September kind of a challenge, and so each day there's a specific theme, and then you do some kind of makeup look for that. Um, so it's been fun. It's been a nice way now that we're in quarantine and the pandemic. I get to still kind of practice some of that theater stuff that I love teaching at Clay High School. Right, and what are you going to be showing us? Like, what makeup look are you going to be doing today? Okay, so today is one of my favorite looks because you can adapt it to kind of anything. And it's the idea of sort of tearing away your face and so the skin reveals something underneath. Um, and so I'm going to do something. It's my favorite thing to do, which is the gory, bloody stuff. Cool, so <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> All right. Um, so basically, I always wanna make sure that I'm safe, you wash your hands, you wash your face off, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start using liquid latex and applying the fake skin. And uh, so latex is, is something interesting because um, you can have an allergy to it, it can cause really negative reactions, uh, but if you know that you're not allergic to latex, it's really cool stuff. It's kind of like Elmer's glue, except squishier, to use the technical term. And then you, how long does this, like, how long does it dry into your face? Um, depending on how much you do, and I tend to do very thin layers, uh, typically like a minute to two minutes. So pretty fast. Um, when I do bigger pieces or when I create prosthetics to put on, I usually have a fan uh, just to speed the process along. It also depends if you get it in your hair. Uh, it is not a good idea to get it in your hair. <laughs> it hurts really bad coming off. So it's almost like a wax. Yes, <laughs> a lot like that. Uh, whenever I've had to do something like really close to my lips, I always try to like shave any little hairs there because even if you're like, oh no, it's going to be fine, it hurts. It doesn't hurt right away, but when you take it off, all of a sudden you're like, ow. Yeah. So yeah, so this is pretty much like the fake skin, um, and that way I can do a lot with this that you would obviously not want to do with your real skin. Uh, so for other looks, I've stitched through the latex, um, which is a really weird feeling in that you're, you're watching yourself push a needle through, and it should hurt, uh, but it doesn't because it's not your real skin, there's no nerves. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just kind of a, a really weird process. Uh, so when it gets dry, you can tell because it'll get kind of this tacky, plasticky feeling. And if it comes off on your skin or on your hand, then you know it's not done. Um, and latex is really shiny. So I always want to put powder over it, just, just like plain setting powder. Um, you can use flour. It gets kind of gunky, but it works. So the cool thing about a lot of these makeup looks is that you can do a lot of them with um, stuff you have at home or drugstore kind of makeup. Uh, or you can get kind of official theater type stuff. And I use kind of a combination of both of them. And what inspired you for this makeup look? So like, are there any mu movies? Have you, have you seen use this? Um, a, a lot of horror movies use kind of the general gist of it. Um, also my laziness at not wanting to create an actual prosthetic piece that I have to then glue onto my face. So latex is kind of a cheap, fast way of, of doing it. We call it out of the kit, meaning that you don't prepare it ahead of time. Uh, you just apply it directly to the talent or in this case, myself. Mm -hmm. um, horror movies are, are not easy to do the makeup for, but the nice thing about horror movies is you can use a lot of blood and it just covers up anything that maybe doesn't look as nice. Um, so for example, this would not necessarily be a great look uh, in movies because you will see the seams like when it starts to really dry, you can actually see where the latex ends and my skin begins. Um, you can use gelatin, like basically the same thing that we find in Jello, but with no flavor and no color. Uh, and that works a little bit better and you can, you can smear it out a little bit better. Um, so there's lots of different options about how exactly you want to go about creating this look. I didn't used to like horror movies when I was in high school and then college hit and I all of a sudden loved horror movies. And so that's kind of when I started doing creepy stuff. 
So this is the next part where it looks really weird if you were to think that this is actual skin and you can use sort of your fingernails. I prefer using a tool. This is just like an art modeling tool and you just want to pick at the skin, um, the fake skin and pull it up. So you wouldn't want to use something actually sharp where you hurt yourself. And so just right along the edge, real gently, I pick at it. I don't know if you can see that skin starts to kind of peel up. Yeah. Um, a lot like Elmer's glue, right? When you get Elmer's glue on your hand, you sort of like rub it and it comes off. Um, and so that's what I'm doing with this. You can use a lot of skin. So if I were to put it really far onto my face and then peel at it, it's gonna like hang there. Um, so yeah, I like the flexibility of, of playing around with different things you can do with this. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> looks concerning. It looks gross. <laughs> yeah. It looks really gross. Um, it's weird to do on myself. I freak out more when I do it on other people just because I'm, you know, I'm like, does that hurt? Does that hurt? So I, yeah. I'm always very aware of, it looks like I'm pulling their skin off uh, and it seems like it should hurt even when I know it doesn't. Um, so yeah, so I mean, again, it's, it's all about safety. I've seen some people who are like, just use the edge of a knife. I'm like, no, don't use the edge of a knife. That's a terrible, <laughs> terrible idea. Um, the other thing I have found uh, safety wise, I'm big into safety and everything that I do, I try to kind of research first, um, is that when you're applying latex to anybody, if they start to say like, oh wow, it's getting really hot in here or my skin is burning. Um, I worked with a makeup artist one time who was like, oh, that's fine, it'll go away in a second. And that's a terrible thing to say because a lot of times it's irritating the skin and it can get really bad really fast. Um, I saw somebody once who wore latex after it was burning their skin and when they took it off, they had like blisters on their skin. Um, so that's where as a makeup artist and as anybody working with makeup, it's cool to try stuff, but if it hurts, obviously don't try that anymore. So I'm almost done peeling this all up. I think all of this waiting for stuff to dry and like slowly picking at stuff is what takes the longest amount of time. Yeah. And... So you do theater and so have, haven't you been like makeup artist on certain plays? I have. Um, so the plays that I most commonly work on uh, just require very basic makeup, like sort of stage makeup where you want to make the face as visible as possible. Um, people used to say get makeup that's two shades darker, but that's not entirely true for all tones of skin. Uh, and so it kind of boils down to however the light's going to best react to the makeup, that's what you should do. But I have gotten lucky in that um, I do some kind of weird looks. So when we did Oedipus Rex a couple years ago, his eyes get ripped out at the end. Um, and so that was fun because I was trying to find a really good kind of blood that didn't actually get all over everything and that would sort of run out of his hands instead of just sitting like a pool. Um, so I've done that. I did some fantasy makeup for a couple different shows. We did uh, She Kills Monsters, which is all Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and so that was a lot of kind of fantasy makeup, elves and uh, trolls and stuff like that. So yeah, I've gotten to do a couple different things. And what really, like, when did you first start doing makeup and what really made you want to do SFX makeup? So I really didn't do much makeup um, at all until I started doing theater in high school. Um, and actually, when I, when I first started doing makeup at all, it was for theater, which was cool in a lot of ways, um, but also meant that when I went to do my prom makeup, everything was really exaggerated, and I was like... I look better from 20 feet away because that's how I learned to do my makeup. When I got into college, um, I started out thinking I was going to major in theater and then that changed a couple different times. Um, but one of the classes I took was uh, makeup and mask making just because I knew the professor. Um, Melissa Bialco was a good friend of mine. I worked with her. And so I took that class and we learned a lot of kind of the basics, contouring, old age, um, stuff like that. And I really took to a burn unit that we did. Um, and then from that, I kind of went out and looked at other things that people do and was really intrigued by that whole thing. And so was largely self-taught after that, just being introduced um, 
to what you can do with makeup because I had always thought of makeup as eyeliner and lipstick and things like that. Um, so yeah, so a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of finding pictures and saying, hmm, I wonder how I can do that and a lot of trial and error. Yeah, and you say you use like theater makeup and some drugstore as well. So what are your favorite, where are your favorite places to get certain makeup for SFX? Um, I have kind of a combination in my kit that I use um, of Ben Nye, which is a theater brand that I really like. They have some really good quality stuff. Um, and I haven't used that yet, but that's, that's coming up. It's the, the better stuff. Uh, but I also, because of my budget, uh, use a lot of big lots kind of stuff because I love going in there and seeing kind of what they have on sale. You know, they have those wonderful little orange clearance stickers. I'm like, oh, what do they have? Weird stuff like that. So some of my more strange colors of lipstick and eyeliner, I get from places like that. Um, Dollar Tree has a lot of good stuff that I use. Um, any of the dollar stores, Family Dollar, Dollar General, things like that. Um, and the nice thing about those is if I decide that I absolutely hate the makeup, I don't feel bad throwing away, you know, a dollar, two dollar kind of makeup. And oh, I forgot what I was gonna ask. So Okay. What is one product in your makeup kit that you can't live without? That's a good question. Um, liquid latex is always kind of a go to for me. Um, as is, it's called spirit gum. It smells awful, but it works really well. Um, I used to have Prozaid, which is a medical adhesive, and it's basically a less smelly um, form of spirit gum. And so it's good for putting on fake hair. It's good for uh, all kinds of stuff, putting on prosthetics, things like that. But I think probably the one thing that I really love in my kit is primer just like I use e.l.f. brand primer. And the reason for that is uh, for a long time, I did not care about my skin. And I was sort of like, as long as it doesn't fall off, literally, then I don't, you know, I'm not gonna take care of it. I'll wash it off, whatever. Um, and I'm finding the older I get, the more my skin really doesn't like that I do that. Um, and so I have used primer. Uh, I had primer on underneath this before I got here. Um, and that helps to kind of make sure that everything's come off. Uh, and that my skin doesn't actually fall off my face, which is nice. So you use the e.l.f. primer. I personally don't really use primer. Like, I don't know. I used to, but then I ran out, then I just never got it again. I feel that. So, <laughs> um, what advice would you have for someone who wants to do FS FS? SFX? Yeah, SFX makeup. So the thing that I have found, and I wish I would have uh, sort of known as I was starting all this, is an awareness and an appreciation of your own face. Um, everybody's got things that they don't like about their face or about their body. And for a very long time, I was just kind of like, I'm just going to ignore that. You know, I think my nose looks weird. I don't like how full my cheeks are, whatever that might be. And then the more makeup I do, the more I find you have to really focus on those things and whether you exaggerate them or you change them or whatever it might be, um, it comes in really helpful. Things like old age makeup, you can learn the theory behind it, um, but unless you really kind of understand how your face moves and how your face works, it's not ever really going to look that realistic. Um, so yes, yeah, so I would encourage people to, sounds creepy, people watch, just like notice what people look like and how people anatomically move. Um, and I think that that's invaluable as an artist to kind of see, see what that's like. And so can you tell us what you're doing now? Yeah, <laughs> so I put down kind of uh, muscle looking tendons and uh, this is where I love the science involved with the body and how the body looks. Horror movies, um, it's easy to get away with just, if you're like, oh, that doesn't look good, put some blood on it, which is a good kind of a safe zone for me to have. <laughs> like, oh, this isn't working. I'll just cover it up with blood, um, which I'm gonna end up doing today uh, on purpose, just because stage blood is really cool and fun. Um, 
But now that I've put down sort of where the muscles are uh, after studying facial anatomy on a very basic level, um, I need to hollow out some areas, uh, partly because that's how our body is functioning, but also because it looks a little bit cooler when you do that. Um, so any area that I really don't have a lot of muscle or that muscle wouldn't be there, um, I'm just kind of putting in, this is water-based makeup, which means it comes off a whole lot easier. Uh, Cream-based makeup is also effective. Um, there's grease paint, which I think feels awful, but is also effective. Um, and that's the other thing, is when you're applying any kind of makeup for theater or films or just for Halloween, it kind of boils down to um, what do you need it for and how long does it have to last? So a lot of my looks for the 31 day makeup challenge, I apply, I film them all, I time lapse them, um, and then I wash them off so they don't have to last more than about an hour. Um, and so I have a little bit more flexibility with that. Uh, so then what I do is I go in and I sort of um, do some highlight and some irritation on the skin because as, as it is right now, you can probably see it's a very, very pale color. Um, and so I just go in and right along the edge, I take, this is, this is wet and wild. So again, I just got it from yeah. some like Target or something. Um, and I just add in some of those colors. I think the hardest thing when I find makeup in drugstores and at places like Target and Meyer and stuff is that so often... Um, people want glitter in their makeup, and for effects makeup, you actually don't want glitter most of the time, um, unless you're doing like a magical woodland fairy or something. Um, so that's always hard, is trying to find what I actually need uh, in the color that I need or the consistency that I need, um, something like that. So in, SF, in SFX makeup, like you mostly need matte eyeshadows, and I see like... Are you using, like, do you get mostly paint brushes instead of regular brushes? I have a whole combination here. Um, so a lot of for my water-based paints, uh, I use just paint brushes because they're cheap and they're also a little bit more um, compact. Uh, I also use, this is, I don't know, I think I got this at Kohl's after Christmas one year, um, an actual makeup brush. Ben Nye uh, has their own makeup brushes, and this is a little bit more compact, um, a little bit more... It holds up a little bit better to especially greasy kinds of paints. Um, and then I also, this is my, I think my great, great grandma's vintage makeup brushes and they work really well and they've lasted a really long time. So I have a whole combination of, of different kinds of uh, brushes and tools and stuff like that. And what are some makeup like horror stories? <laughs> oh, there are so many. Um, so kind of makeup, uh, we're going to go back to when I was a stupid high school student back in the day, um, and we had a basketball game on Friday the 13th. So obviously our theme that night was Friday the 13th. And I thought to myself, I was in the, the marching band and the pep band, so I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to wear a hockey mask before realizing I don't have a hockey mask. So in my uh, forever intelligence, I decided that what I would do is I would paper mache a mask, but I didn't have time to make a mold of my face. So I just put paper mache on my face, um, which, you know, you're, everyone who's watching is probably like, that's a terrible idea. And now in hindsight, yes, it was a terrible, terrible idea. Um, I put Vaseline down on my face with every intention of saying, oh no, it's fine. Like it'll come right off. And it, in fact, did exactly what you would think would happen and did not come off um, and ripped off a chunk of my eyebrow oh right, my before, right before the basketball game. So that was, that was not ideal. Uh, I feel like most of my horror stories involve ripping off chunks of my hair or parts of my eyebrow. Um, but less severe, I mean, horror stories have been things where uh, I'll try to do a look last minute and not practice it. And then when I get done, it looks really, really bad. Um, or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have an intention of doing something earlier this summer. Um, <laughs> I was telling you earlier, I tried to look like Angelina Jolie. And sort of partway through, I realized this isn't going to work. And then when I got done, I thought to myself, yeah, no, that definitely did not work. Um, so that, was, that wasn't great. And I hope Angelina Jolie never watches it and says, that's offensive. I don't look like that at all. <laughs> because you're right, you don't look like that. 
Um, okay, so now my favorite part of any makeup is doing the blood, and there's so much different kind of blood. The stuff I have in this little cup here is uh, just sort of the cheap fake blood that you would find at like Halloween stores. You can buy it in a pint. Um, and because it's so bright red, I usually mix it with a drop or two of green food coloring. Um, Christmas colors work really well for, for creepy blood and stuff. Uh, so yeah, so that makes it kind of a more brown, realistic color. But they also have, and this is probably my favorite, is called coagulated blood gel. Um, does not smell the best, but it looks absolutely amazing and disgusting. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of fun to play with. Uh, but the problem with this is it melts, um, which was another horror story. So I worked on a film uh, one time, and it wasn't super makeup heavy, but it involved um, somebody being beat up by their boyfriend. And so she had to have a bloody nose. I thought, okay, I can do that. Um, she gets all bruised up and stuff like that. And then we did it, but because it was a film set, um, we actually couldn't have any of the air on, fans, air conditioning, and it was in the middle of summer. And so it was very hot and the blood kept melting off of the actors. Uh, so my job was to have, it looked like a big sauce condiment bottle of blood and just run in between every take and try to fix it. So that was kind of a mess. Yeah. And you say it gets messy, so like, was that hard to wash off after? Um, that specific kind I actually made, and it was based on a recipe from an opera, um, where they had to every night drench the actor in blood and then wash it out of white clothes. So I purposely chose one that it, it is messy, um, but also uh, it's very clean upable. Cleanable? I'm not sure what the right word is there. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah we're just gonna go with that um i've worked on plays that we've used blood uh and it then becomes a matter of does it have to get in your mouth because like this would taste really bad um i've worked with corn syrup blood i've worked with chocolate chocolate syrup kind of blood um if you get enough chocolate syrup blood in your mouth you never want to have chocolate syrup again <laughs> and i've gotten very close to that so yeah, so basically, I guess what I learned from this is definitely makeup is trial and error. Yes. Like, I feel like my stories aren't as, like, extreme as yours because I don't do SFX, but I've definitely had some mistakes where it's like, this powder, if you turn the flash on, it'll make you look like a ghost or something like that. Something more simple. Yeah. And, you know, and I think, I think unfortunately, we live in a society where you're not allowed to make mistakes. Um, so you, you know, you see stuff all the time that they're like, let's look at the worst celebrity makeup jobs ever on the red carpet. And, you know, they, they say like, oh, there was too much powder. And so they got washed out. Um, and I think as, I mean, as anybody, but especially as a young person, you see that and you read it as if I mess up, everyone's going to make fun of me. There's picture evidence, especially at things like school dances and prom and, uh, things like that. And I think that's a really rotten way to look at it because uh, you said it perfectly when it's trial and error. Um, you know, you try things and you're like, yep, that was really bad. Uh, and other times you try things and, and you think, okay, well that, you know, it wasn't terrible. It sort of turned out like I wanted, but I didn't like this or I didn't like that. Um, like, you know, any kind of art, you try it. And then if it works, great. And if it doesn't work, great, you learn from that. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why I do recordings of my makeup and then speed them up. My makeup looks, at least for this month, uh, have taken anywhere between about 15 minutes and um, like an hour and 15, depending on the look. Uh, and there is always a point where I'm doing the makeup and I look in the mirror, I look in the camera and I think this is not turning out at all uh, the way I wanted it to. But I power through, mainly because I don't really <laughs> want to wash it all off. Um, and then eventually it clicks, you know, it's sort of all of a sudden you do one extra step and it looks like how you want it to. And I think that's a really cool experience of, you know, it's, it's very easy to just sort of give up and, and think to yourself, like, I did it wrong. It's never going to work. And then realize that it can, like you can make it work. It's art. And I think that's the, like, it's very important now that you said that because there's so, I feel like, 
in makeup now, like the makeup industry, like people are getting to makeup younger and younger. Like before it was like, you can't have makeup until you're in high school, but sure. now kids are starting in even elementary school. Yeah, which so. is wild to me because, you know, I was in, in elementary school and middle school and I was like, look at this chapstick, it's got some glitter in it. Like that was about as fancy as I got. And now, yeah, there's these kids who are doing winged eyeliner at age eight, which I'm like power to you because I cannot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's just a cool art form. It's the same with fashion. It's the same with, um, you know, filming. Kids have, have cell phones available to them. And so they're learning things so much earlier and they're getting to make those mistakes and learn from them so much earlier than someone like me. Um, so yeah, so I think it's cool. I think we just need to be in an environment where we are not comparing ourselves like, oh, well, when I was eight, I didn't do that. And so you shouldn't do it either. And instead, look at everything as, wow, that's really cool. Like you're learning from what we did and you're learning on your own too. And that's really cool. Yeah, because even me, I started makeup when I was 13. And then I used to wear makeup here and there, like sneak in my mom's makeup drawer. And then I would try to go out in public with it. And she's like, no, you can't wear that. And then like now I see kids like younger, that were younger than me, like, and they're wearing makeup. I'm like, my mom wouldn't let <laughs> me do that. That's a lot. That. That's a lot for a little kid. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what it what it ends up being. Um, it's very goopy. It's very shiny. You know, you can do all different kinds of things. Um, I've seen people who contour it where it looks like your eyes falling out. Uh, things like having a white eyeliner on your on your waterline makes it so your eyes seem bigger. I've seen um, people who really kind of do their makeup up glamour wise on the other side to make it that much more obvious. You know, you can do fake lashes, you can do eyeshadow, you can do contouring, things like that. But I think what I love most about this look is that you can do whatever you want underneath. So uh, I have never done the look, but I've talked about it with a lot of kids that maybe you want to celebrate Pride Month. And so you do this kind of tearing away and there's a rainbow flag underneath. Um, and it's this, it's this idea that um, it's tearing away. You know, it's tearing away your actual face to reveal something underneath. I love gore type stuff. So muscles, bones, blood, anything like that. But it's, it's a cool art form that you can do realistic stuff. You can do very metaphorical kind of stuff. I just, I really enjoy it. So thanks for letting me show this off to you. Thank you for coming. Sure thing. <laughs> and even looking at this, I'm a little concerned. It's a like, little, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of gross. It's always <laughs> like with SFX makeup, like I have a friend that does FSX, FS. There's a lot of letters, SFX. Yeah, like, <laughs> Elemental B, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend that does FS. Special effects Special makeup. Special effects makeup. <laughs> and like, she sent me some pictures on Snapchat. I'm like, are you okay? Do I need to call the police? It's, yeah, it's really, it's gross. One of my favorite things too, and I, I learned this a couple years ago, is called moulage, um, which is taking makeup and applying it to the medical and the scientific field. And so a lot of hospitals will hire moulage artists and they'll say, look, we need this person to be in a motorcycle accident. And so uh, a moulage artist would know the types of injuries and what that would look like. So if they have a collapsed lung, you're gonna have blue tinged lips and their eyes are gonna be bulging and you're gonna have these specific bruising. And so they, they use that kind of artistry to bring in doctors and, and trainees and say, cool, here's what your victim looks like. Talk me through what's happening to them. Um, so it becomes less a, a showmanship kind of thing and more of those very specific details. Cool, they're distended. Where in the body are they distended and things like that. And moulage artists use paint, they use regular makeup, they use prosthetics. Sometimes they'll have um, like tubes of blood so that blood can spurt out. And again, the medical professionals need to know the medical terms, they need to know what to do to fix them. And then they also need to learn, you know, if you have somebody come in who's spurting blood, you don't wanna go, ew, that's gross, because yeah. you know, that's a person who needs your help. <laughs> so it's cool to, to kind of learn makeup artistry and you can do beauty makeup, you can do film or stage, you can do the medical field. There's a lot of different options out there. Well, thank you for coming once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. And I'll see you at Clay, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed her look. And where can we check you out? So I have an Instagram. Uh, it's just my last name, H-E-I-N, and then my first name, Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N. Um, and that's a public Instagram, and it's where I post uh, all different kinds of stuff that I do as far as makeup. So. The, the last, I think I'm on day 21 right now, so there's 10 more days of makeup, and those will all get posted there. All right, so thank you so much. Yeah.